Hi YouTube, in this video I'm going to show you how you can install Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi 3B. I'm also going to give this away at the end of the video, so please stick around for information about the giveaway. Let's get started. So I'm not only going to give away a Raspberry Pi, but I'm also going to give away this micro SD card with all of the configurations and automations I'm going to show you in this video. To enter the competition, please check the rules in the description, but you'll only need to subscribe to the channel, the competition will be valid for two weeks, and you need to leave a comment in the description with your favorite automation. Let's get started. Home Assistant is a home automation platform that puts local control and privacy at its heart. It's compatible with many types of hardware, and in this video, I'll be using a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. To do this project, you will need, in addition, an Ethernet cable and an AT port on your router, a micro SD card with at least 32 gigs, class 2, a Raspberry Pi power supply, and a card reader if your laptop doesn't have one already. The first thing we're going to do now is to download the image for your device. I'm going to download the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B image, 32-bit. Now, we need to download Balina Etcher. This can enable us to copy over the files that you just downloaded and flash them to your SD card. To flash the SD card, you're going to go and click Flash from File, find your image, the one we just downloaded previously, open it, and now we need to pick the target, which is going to be our SD card. Once you've selected the SD card, you're ready to flash, prompt in your password, and you're ready to go. The flashing process should take a couple of minutes. After that, eject the SD card and put it back into the Raspberry Pi and power it up. So go to your HTTP home assistant local 8123, paste that into your web browser. So at this stage, go and get yourself a nice cup of coffee or tea because it will take a while. So once Home Assistant has finished installing, we've got our welcome page. So now we can put in a name, a username, and a really strong password. In the next screen, we have available a few things. We can give our home a name, we can change the time zone, the location, and the unit system. But bear in mind, you can always change them later on. At this stage, Home Assistant is gonna scan your network, and it's gonna try and give you some suggestions. In my example, I've got a Sonos and a Google Cast, but we're going to set them up later. Now, the basic installation of Home Assistant is finished. Now, we need to start adding on add-ons. What are add-ons? Add-ons are little pieces of functionality that expands what we can do. The first add-on we're going to use now is a file editor. File editor enable you to access your configuration files like configuration.yaml or automation.yaml or scripts.yaml and you can change them. It's gonna be a really, really fundamental piece, and let's get it sorted now. Go into Supervisor, click Add-on Stores, File Editor, and Install. Now remember to start on Boot, and Show in Sidebar, and click Start. At this stage, you should see the File Editor on your left-hand side. Click on File Editor, and now you can browse the folder contents. You'll find your configuration or YAML file and all the other files. Next add-on is Samba. Samba is going to enable you to take backups of your configuration file offline, but it also enables you to edit files with a file editor like Atom or Visual Studio Code. Go back to Supervisor and click onto the add-on store. Find Samba Share, click on it, and click Install. Now, before you press Start, you need to go to the configuration tab and set a password. Now you're ready to start the add-on. On your Mac, go to Go, Connect to Server. Now you need to find the IP address for your Home Assistant. Type that in and connect. There's a similar process for Windows also. I'm using Atom to actually make changes to the configuration file. And now if I go back into Home Assistant, you'll actually see it there too. MariaDB is an extra database that you can install. This is an optional step. You don't have to do this and you can do this always later on. But if you do do this, bear in mind that it might increase the amount of data that's saved on your SD card and the input output might also suffer. So bear that in mind. Back in the add-on store, look for MariaDB. You're going to need to set a username and password for this before starting it up. 
and also you need to go to the configuration file and enter recorder as seen. MQTT is a really fundamental piece of technology that enables you to connect devices, your little IoT devices around the house. So you need to install the MQTT Mosquito Broker, which is sort of the recommended and the standard. Let's get that one sorted now. When you're new in Home Assistant, you need to be able to check your configuration file. Let's add an add-on in, and this could really be helpful for you. Now let's talk about integrations. Integrations are what really is gonna give you all of the functionality that you want from Home Assistant. I'm gonna now do a Huey light bulb system integration, and you're gonna see how it all works. Now go to configurations and look for the Huey bulbs integration. Click configure. You should have the one bridge to pick. So pick it, submit, and now go to the Huey bridge and press the button and press submit. And that's it really. Now you can see all of your devices that are paired into the Hue bridge into Home Assistant under the Devices tab. You can also give these devices a specific area so you can start creating rooms in your system and assigning these to the correct room. Home Assistant pre-populates a dashboard for you so that you can use it immediately. To create your own, it's quite simple. Press the plus button Go to Entities, and you can just search Hallway, and there's a big tick checkbox, tick and mole, and add them. And you can add them to Lovelace UI, and there it is. And now you're ready to toggle on and off switches and look at the statuses of the sensors. There are so many other things that you can do and you can add into Home Assistant, but we just haven't got enough time today to do them all. So please remember to enter the giveaway and just start exploring, start enjoying Home Assistant. I'm gonna link a playlist here with more videos that you can check out. Stay safe.